This video is brought to you by Sporlin. Quality, integrity, and tradition. We have got a problem with the bar AC today. It's this guy right here. Um, we had some uh, one of my guys out here to clean the unit up, but they were still having issues with it. So uh, we're gonna go through this and figure it out. Honestly, it doesn't even look like it has power at the moment. Something's going on there. I said it didn't have power and I come over here and the disconnect switch is off. So I don't know why we left it off. So I'm not gonna turn it on yet because I wanna make sure that nothing is grounded out in the unit. I don't know why it was left off. So we checked power, three phase, phase to phase, nothing, and we're double checking to ground to make sure it doesn't have any power. And then we're gonna do a continuity test to see if uh, we've got any direct shorts to ground. So we put it on that one, the select button, touch them together, make sure you get a tone. There you go. Let's check it out. See if we got anything. Nothing, nothing, nothing. So we don't have any direct shorts to ground. Now let's check on the load side of the contactors because that was just on the line side. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Keep going. Okay. All right, so I'm pretty confident we can turn on the power and just kind of try to figure out what's going on here. Do a visual, inspect the blower. Okay, turn that switch off again. Power off. Okay. Belt snug. Pulleys in decent shape. Actually, belts, that's a little too tight. Yeah, that's. I'll have to check on that. It seems a little bit too tight to me. Go ahead and check the filters. This thing's been down for a while. Huh, I wonder if it was like left off from the filter changers or something because the filters that were installed in April of 21 don't even look dirty at all. So I wonder if it's off from the filter changers. And we're gonna look up in here. It's just all Eights. That's weird. I don't know if that makes sense, but it's it's all showing up as three eights. That's weird. So we're gonna hit recall. I'm gonna hit recall right here. So what the past error codes have been. I think there's something going on with this board because it has all eights on it, and it's not responding to anything. That's weird. Yeah, something's up here. That's not good. What the heck is this about? Let's go ahead and push this back. Make sure none of the dip switches are messed up. Don't see anything. It may not come across on camera, but this is just all eights and all decimals. I've never seen it. And notice there's not a heartbeat indicator on this light right here. And even this one, the heartbeat indicator is solid. It's not, see none of them are flashing. None of the heartbeat indicators are flashing. They're just solid. So that's making me think that we might have a bad board. Something's funky there. So when it comes to a board issue like this, this board is just bricked. It's just not doing anything. So the, again, three solid eights, three solid decimals on there, which you never see. And then we do not have flashing heartbeats. It's just solid heartbeat light. That's not good. And then this main board, the M16 doesn't have a heartbeat light at all. Okay, we're gonna power this unit down and we're gonna pull this board out and inspect it. Looking at the board, I do not see any burn marks. Don't see any issues there. Everything looks decent, no melted solder. So yeah, I mean, there's not really a whole lot more I can do other than check voltage, so. When we do put it back together, we'll confirm that we've got proper voltage. But the fact that we had LED lights on kind of indicates to me that we do have voltage, but we'll verify that. But yeah, I'm not seeing any bad solder connections. All right, so we put it all back in and we turned it back on. And what's interesting is when you power it up, the heartbeat light lights up and then it goes away. And then this is the solid three eights. You know, it's just totally bricked. 
So the only other thing we can do, I didn't see any burn marks, any damage, is we're just gonna make sure that we've got proper voltage coming from the transformer. So let's go ahead and check um, the load voltage, which is gonna be this side, to see if we have proper 24 volts. Six volts, that's all you got? So that's not good. Okay, check the other transformer. Okay, so what we need to actually do here, I guess we should have done this first. Let's check to make sure we actually have three phase power. So that's a problem. Keep going. Forty-eight volts. Okay, keep going. Two thirteen. Okay, and then do one more. Okay, now let's check each line to ground. I suspect we're gonna have one or two bad fuses downstairs. One twelve. Okay. One twenty-two. Okay. Oh, that's odd. So 112, 122, 122. That's a very odd voltage. So it's not gonna be a fuse issue. It's gonna be like a burnt bus bar or something. So that's line two to three. That's line one to two, 48 volts. And then line one to three is 177. Okay, so we're gonna take a meter and some tools and we're gonna go down and find a main breaker or main electrical panel and see if we've got a bad breaker or bad fuses or what. We're gonna start at the main disconnect to see if we've got proper voltage coming in. So this guy real quick. Okay, so the main disconnect. Okay, keep going. Okay, I'll check the last one, one to three. All right, so the problem is not our power switch. The problem is before that, so we need to get downstairs. I'm making an assumption when I came down here that the unit we're working on is RTU4 just because it's the biggest disconnect switch. Probably need to go check that, but this is the biggest unit on the roof. So we're gonna go ahead and check the fuses real quick. Um, let's go ahead and test across these guys. We've already verified there's no voltage. Okay, top fuse is good. Bottom fuse is good. All right, all three fuses are good. So where is our problem? Hmm. Okay, we were able to get in here and get this opened. 213, 214, 213. Okay, so we've got proper voltage leaving the panel. We need to make sure this is actually the right AC. So what I did was I turned it off down at the panel. And we're gonna confirm we have no voltage up here. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing, okay. And then I'm gonna have my tech that's down there turn it on and we'll confirm it turns on. Yes, I did confirm that is the right fuses, the right um, disconnect. So we need to look between there and here we're gonna search all of our electrical connection points. So we've got an LB right there, and then we come over here, and we've got a large junction box right here with an LB on the bottom of it. So let's see if there's any splice points and if there's any potential problems at those splice points. We do have power turned off at the moment, so. So, I suspect our problem is in here, and it is. Look at that, whoa boy, the wire's fried. Mega dangerous. Lucky didn't trip the breaker. I don't know if we can repair that or not because there might not be enough wire here. Holy majoli. Wow, that's not good. Wow, look at that splicing lug. It had been arcing and it completely melted the lug. That's crazy, huh? We've got power turned off and locked out, so. But holy majoli, man. I don't think I have enough room. To repair that and it doesn't look like any wire is going to pull up so i'm probably going to have to have an electrician take care of this um hmm. 
I can attempt to take this box off. If I can get this box off, maybe there's enough wire. I don't know though. I don't think so. So I was able to get the box loose and I just wanted to see if there was enough wire to cut it back and put a new splice on it. And I don't think there is because it feels like the burning starts right here. So we're gonna cut it back though anyways and just see. And I tried pulling up on it and it's not pulling, it's not budging. Um, well, there's a couple things we could do here. We could also cut this down and cut the conduit and make the wires longer that way too. Huh. This is where I cut it back at and it's still pretty rigid right here. So there's a couple different options. Number one, I could cut this down because they've had a new roof put on. So you can cut this down and cut the conduit down and probably get another couple inches of wire. But we still have the problem of the burnt wire going to the load too. And here's the thing. I got a bunch of service calls today. I could certainly do this. I'd have to go get wire, run the new wire. It's going to be a pain to pull that wire too, by the way, because it's super tight with those, that LB and everything. That's just kind of miserable. It needs to be reground. But um, I'm going to go ahead and tell them to get an electrician for this because, like I said, I could do it, but it's going to take me all day. I could go get, you know, three more calls, two more calls done today and have an electrician come and fix this and then I can go through it and deal with it later. So I'm gonna assemble this back together. We're gonna make sure that this is safe and isolated so no damage. We're gonna go ahead and tell them to get an electrician out here, have them fix this. They can determine whether or not they can cut the wire back, but they'll definitely have to run a new feed that way. Um, yeah, and that's where we're at on this one. So I'm gonna do everything I can to help out the electrician. Number one, I'm going to advise him that he may want to rerun the conduit because trying to pull if he determines that he wants to use two gauge wire because this is two gauge trying to pull that through the lbs is like a nightmare but i'll let him make that decision i'm also going to send him the minimum and maximum circuit ampacity so this unit does not have a powered exhaust correct so minimum circuit ampacity is 83 amps maximum is 90 amps so we'll give him that information. This is a 208 three phase unit. He can determine what size wire he wants to run on this, but I'm just trying to help him out. So I'm gonna send an email to uh, the powers that be at the restaurant with detailed pictures, breakdown, what I found, what I did. And that's the other thing too. We don't ever leave everything all opened up. We closed it all back up, taped everything up safely. We, even though the electricians come in here, we don't leave everything half-assed. We put it back together like we found it as best as possible. And then, uh, you know, we don't want any liability or anything like that. So we're gonna bring it to the customer's attention, give them the pictures, tell them what I found, tell them what size wires go into the unit, um, and then let them get a hold of their electrician and they can make the determination. Now, the other thing too, is we need to make it so that way uh, we have to come back and check phase rotation once they fix it because the phases are going to be off. So we got to make sure that the unit doesn't run. Um, so what we'll go ahead and do is go ahead and disconnect the transformer on both of them. So that way it doesn't try to start. And then uh, we'll tape those off. And then that way when the electrician comes out, he hooks his stuff up. We have to come back because I don't want them being responsible for checking phase rotation with all these scroll compressors. Uh, plus, we don't know what caused that. I have a pretty good idea what caused that, and that was more than likely just a loose electrical connection, hence why you see the melted molten metal. So let's go look at it real quick. But still, we want to verify that the unit's working properly. So this is melted. This turned into molten. And uh, I bet you it was because of a loose electrical connection. Um, and that probably caused it to start heating up and arcing and melting the aluminum from this guy. Pretty crazy, I've never seen one melted that bad though. We are back today, so we had the electrician come out, but I can't help but notice someone's been doing some dental work on the roof. Interesting. We had the electrician come out, and uh, they ended up redoing the entire electrical run, getting rid of all that crap EMT stuff, and giving us a whole new run all the way over. So, we're gonna go through this unit now and figure out if everything was done correctly, if the phase rotation's correct, that stupid thing fell off. And then when I was here last time, when I found the electrical problem, I permanently disconnected the unit. Pretty sure I disconnected the transformer or something. I did something to disconnect it so it wouldn't turn back on. So we're gonna go through that right now. 
So they pulled all new wire all the way down from the panel. We're right here. We're gonna test to make sure we actually have three phase power first before we power it on. Line one to two. Line two to three. And then line one to three. So we have three phase power. At this point, I have the transformer still disconnected. I feel comfortable turning this back on, but we're gonna go ahead and put this panel on first. All right, we've got the power turned on. We're gonna test the phase rotation using the SC480 meter. So go from line one to line two. Okay, line one to line two. We wait for it to say line three. I don't know why we're getting an error. There you go, now go from one to three. And there you go, line one, two, three. So our phase rotation is correct on this guy. So we're good. We're going to bump the contactors. Sounds good. Sounds good. Sounds good. So they sound good. So at this point, we're gonna go ahead and hook our commons back up to the transformers, let the unit fire up, and then test the unit operations to make sure everything else is working properly. All right, we're hooked back up. We fired back up. We're going through our startup sequence right now. Okay, we've got no errors present. We've got a call for the indoor blower motor. We're gonna go ahead and uh, quickly fire this guy into test mode and then test the unit operations. CO1 and we're gonna change it to C11. It's a full call for cool. Hold down the button until we get the decimal. There we go. All right, we're firing up and we're gonna go through all operations. We'll probe up on it. We'll make sure all the condenser fan motors are working and all that stuff. All right, here's my first stage running. It does not look bad. Um, sub point's a wee bit lower than I'd expect because we're on discharge line. I would typically see that around 16, but I mean, in the approach being zero, I'm a little bit skeptical about that. We gotta look at our probe placement though. What's our capacity output right now? Temperature splits about 21 degrees. Capacity output. I mean, it doesn't sound horrible. It's probably not very accurate yet. The unit hasn't really stabilized out too well either. So um, let's, uh, let's look at our temperature clamp. It's kind of in the sunlight right now. So I'm gonna move it right here in the, the shade because this condenser doesn't really get a whole lot of sunlight. I mean, it kind of does, but not bad. So we're gonna leave it right there and see what that does and see if that changes anything. All right, measure quick is kind of going back and forth between giving us the all clear, just gave me a green checkered flag a minute ago. So as it's stabilizing out, it's looking pretty good. I'm not too concerned on this one. We're gonna go ahead and move over to the second stage now. Second stage is looking pretty good. Um, yeah. I'm happy, so we're gonna jump to the third stage and see how that one's doing. All right, this is our third stage. I mean, I'm, I'm not too scared with these numbers, guys. I'm not gonna change anything for this. This guy's doing really well. So I'm a happy camper. Um, temp split's doing good. We're gonna give them the all clear on this unit. So it was just an electrical issue, but I wanted to come back to check phase rotation and make sure the unit was working properly to where I can troubleshoot it. All is well, we've got a tight belt. All the condenser fan motors are running. Uh, the condenser's clean. This one's done, guys. So today we got a call on a air conditioner for the dining room not working. It's this guy right here. We're actually just here working on their bar unit. So the power switch is on. This is weird, this panel looks like it's not on correct. It's there, there's a belt there. Let's open this up and see if we have any error messages on the display. All right, this is our digital display and we have no contactors pulled in. And if you come down here, we have a call for G, Y1, Y2, and the occupied signal. Um, let's see, we have heartbeat lights, but they're beating really fast. That one's beating normal. And that one's beating really fast, and that one's beating really fast. So there's something wrong here. So we're gonna test voltage to start with. All right, so line one to two, we have 207, okay? Two to three, 207. And one to 
one, two, three, two, four. So we have three phase power coming in, but something's going on here. All right, so three phase power coming in at that, and then that jumps over to all the tops of the contactors, and then when they pull in, it goes out. But the fact that we're getting that heartbeat indicator is a problem. So we need to check voltage on the transformer to see if we have the proper output. So we can actually just test right on the outside of that transformer right there. We get 26 volts, okay, that's good. So we're, we're bringing power out of the transformer. Hmm, that's interesting. Those heartbeat indicators, those lights that are labeled HB, they should not be flashing that fast. See, this is a normal. Even that honestly looks a little fast to me, to be honest with you, so it's kind of odd. So let's look at our dip switches. Nothing looks weird on the dip switch settings. Let's try to put the unit into a test mode and see what happens. So we're gonna go to shift and unit test. And let's see if the unit tries to go into a test mode. No, it's not. So it's not trying to go into test mode. So let's turn that off. It's very interesting. Okay, so we need to cycle power to this unit. Turned it off there, give it a second, then we're gonna cycle it back on and see if it does the same thing. Here we go. Okay, we're cycled back on. And look at, we have normal just flashes on the heartbeats now. Slow, slow, <coughs> slow. And now the unit started up. That's really weird. Let's go ahead and shut that door. Very interesting. I wonder if they had like a power problem or something because, hmm, that's kind of bizarre. So we're gonna let the unit turn on on its own. We're gonna wait for all the fans to turn on and everything, um, and we're just gonna monitor it. All right, we had just done a service call on this one where we had to have an electrician come out and run a new service. Um, they had an electrical short. One of the lugs was completely melted, and I'm starting to wonder, well, in talking to the manager, the manager said that this unit had gone down at the same time, but they assumed that the bar and this unit were the same and they didn't communicate that to us. So we had come out to work on the bar AC, found an electrical problem, took a couple weeks, the electrician redid his stuff. Then we just came out earlier this week and uh, troubleshooted the unit just to make sure it was working correctly, the phase rotation like you guys just saw right now. And we got out of here, assuming we were done. And then the manager called us back two days later and says, hey, the bar AC is still not working. And then I asked them, I go, what do you mean? And they go, well, just the two vents over this dining room. And I'm like, that's not the bar AC, that's another AC. And they, then we kind of put it together and they were like, oh, we thought that was the same unit. And no, it's not the same unit. So this unit was locked out on some sort of an electrical problem. You guys saw the boards, how they were flashing, okay. Um, now they're flashing normal because we just turned off power down at the disconnect. We went downstairs to the main panel where all the mains are and checked to look at the fuses and made sure there was nothing funky going on. There's not, so we have proper voltage. So the only thing I can assume is that both of these units went down about the same time. My assumption is maybe we had a brownout or a power surge or something and it blew that loose connection apart. And maybe this unit went down at the same time too, but we just didn't know it. Um, yeah, that's the only thing I could assume because all that we did was restore power, cycle power on and off, and then those LEDs or those heartbeat indicators stopped beating fast and the unit started up and was running. So we're gonna give it another opportunity for it to restart right now. And we also went through in the manual and it says that a, a flickering, they call it a flickering heartbeat on the add-on boards is an electrical connection problem. Uh, I'm assuming, because they're not talking about the A55 board, they're talking about the add-on board, so I'm assuming, you know, it just had a voltage problem at some point and it locked itself out. So we reset it and we're gonna watch it turn on one more time, but I mean, I don't think we need to do too much more on this one. All right, so this is the first stage and I mean, you can't really ask for much better than that. Remember the subcooling reads a little bit higher than what people normally expect because we're using discharge pressure, but these units don't really use subcooling 
as their charging metric anyways they use approach temperature um but uh yeah i mean we're looking on point there temperature splits a hair on the low side but we're still stabilizing i'm liking that a lot so uh we're gonna check the other stage now and see what the other stage is doing and my second stage is pretty much doing the same thing 10 degrees super heat the txv is working 15 degrees 14 degrees sub cooling i mean that's not bad guys it's really not that bad temperature split like i said earlier it was still stabilizing out it's much better I, I don't see anything wrong with this unit other than a potential electrical problem and the board was basically bricked and locked itself out on those fast flashes so just cycling power is all that we did and we're just gonna have to tell the customer to keep an eye on it i mean it's always a possibility that they have an intermittent electrical problem and or a circuit board failing but i'm not going to condemn a board when it's working right now you know so the the new style of video you guys are seeing um i've been working with an apprentice a lot so that's why you see other people's hands and me kind of instructing people and i think some people have caught on to that um and i will say too before i'll say this right off the bat in the end of the video i do not use the uei meter the dl429 or whatever that was that's my apprentice's meter okay so i was letting him use his tools on that nothing wrong with it just not my style of meter so i know there'll be a bunch of people that'll comment oh my gosh you got rid of the field piece you know all this stuff no okay so um the original service call started uh obviously you guys saw the whole video so you see that there was a miscommunication there okay but the original service call started um in the beginning of the summer when we were slammed we were super busy and so what had actually happened was we were getting a lot of these service calls for acs and i would have to go out and spend hours cleaning the rooftop equipment so what i started doing was when i got calls at these restaurants that i personally hadn't been to in a very long time i started sending someone out just to clean the equipment before i even troubleshooted it i was just like i don't have time to go through and clean all this stuff and then troubleshoot in the midst of the summer so i had sent someone out there all that they were there to do was clean it they were not a service technician you know to go through and stuff and we knew that the bar ac was still a problem um i'm still kind of confused about that other ac though but anyways that's a whole nother thing but um so then i came out and we diagnosed the bad electrical connection so in hindsight after looking at everything i really think what happened was maybe they had a lightning strike Maybe they had some sort of a power surge and it just affected those two units for some reason. I think both the units went down at the same time. Uh, there was a lack of communication between the managers and uh, myself. You know, they thought, and it's funny too, because the day that I, f I came back to start up the bar AC, you know, after the electrician did all of his stuff, they were like, oh, cool. It's so great. They never once said anything to me about their other AC that was down. And then it's funny because two days later, I get a service call and it came through our system, through our, our uh, uh, dispatching system as a service, uh, as a callback. They were like, yeah, the AC you just fixed still isn't working. And so then I called and I talked to them and I go, what do you mean the AC is not working? The bar AC is not working? And they're like, no. You know, you, you fixed it that day and it's cold in the bar, but it's not cold in the other side of our dining room. And I go, well, wait a minute the bar AC and the other side of the dining room are not connected. And they're like, what? No, it is. And I go, no, it's not like that's, that's two different ACs. And they, you know, they, it took some convincing to make them really, I mean, whatever, you know, but even when I went out there, they, they put it in as a callback. So like the not to exceed value was zero and all this stuff. And I was like, guys, this isn't a callback. This has nothing. It's, it's a totally separate AC. And they were like, well, we, Oh, we thought, and it's like, yeah, no, you guys never communicated that you had a whole nother dining room down anyways whatever it's all good we we rectified everything still don't know why that ec the circuit board was bricked like that or, or locked up you know froze um but you know once i restored power everything was fine so that's why i can only assume that the bar ac and that ac went down at the same time um there's no way that the electrical short caused this other ac to go down because they each have their own individual circuit protection and breakers fuses and all that stuff so that's not the case so the only thing i could think of was some sort of a a brownout we get those in california where we get low voltage we lose power that kind of stuff or possibly some sort of a power surge which we also get occasionally when uh when the power uh you know when we have a power outage or something like that and they turn it back on the voltage will spike and it'll wreak havoc too kind of like a lightning strike so it's hard to say we are also going through our monsoonal season right now here in Southern California. So for the last two, three weeks, 
which doesn't really make sense for this one, but we've had, we've had a lot of lightning and stuff um, in the area. So who knows? This is one of those mysteries. You know, I, I could only do my best to make sure everything is working properly and the ACs are doing everything they could. So not really a whole lot more to check on this, just more procedural troubleshooting and also knowing when to say, hey, you know what? I need to get an electrician involved. In this situation, it was just better. Uh, there was a bunch of things I could have tried to do to get them operational, but it, you know, I just, I didn't have time to spend an entire day there trying to run an electrical circuit, you know, f up on the roof. The electrician does the stuff down below the roof, but you know, I didn't have time to deal with that. So that's why I just got the electrician involved. So it is what it is. I really, really appreciate you guys. Um, all your support has been so awesome. You know, uh, you guys are amazing. It's very humbling. Um, again, I'm just another service technician. Like I'm just a normal dude. There's, there's many people out there much better than I. So it's so humbling to see the encouragement, the support from you guys. Um, you know, it, it, it's just, it, again, it's just so humbling. I don't know what else to say, but thank you. You guys are amazing. Okay. Um, if you guys have any interest in supporting the channel, um, you know, you can, you can't, whatever. It doesn't matter. If you don't, I'm going to keep making these videos. It's all good. But if you guys have any interest in supporting it, the easiest way to support the channel, simply watch the videos from beginning to end without skipping through anything. That's the easiest way, guys. Um, you can also support the channel if you're interested in purchasing any tools. You can go to truetechtools.com and you can actually use my offer code big picture, one word. You can get an 8% discount as of today. All right, July 31st, 2021. Um, I haven't heard anything, but there's always the possibility they can change that. And I have to say that because some of these videos sit on my channel for years and I don't want them to change something. And then, you know, whatever, you guys get what I'm saying. But as of today, there's an 8% discount. Um, you put in that offer code, I get a small commission from that. If you do know what kind of tools you're going to purchase, you guys can shoot me over an email and I can generate an affiliate link, which will give me a little bit of an extra commission, but you guys still get to use the offer code, same discount. Okay. Um, you can also support the channel uh, via Patreon, via YouTube channel memberships, via PayPal, um, by going to my website, hvacrvideos.com. We have uh, merchandise available, hats, beanies, sweaters. I know summer's still here, but as we come closer and closer to the fall, uh, we have zip-up hoodie sweatshirts available on the website. Uh, we have beanies available. We have cuffed and non-cuffed beanies, so those are all there ready to go. We have a couple different shirt designs like I said, the hats. Um, anyways, you guys are free to check that stuff out if you want to. Other than that, I appreciate you guys so much. Remember that I try to go live Monday evenings, 5 p.m. Pacific on YouTube to do a live stream where I do a Q&A where I answer questions and answer comments and different things. And then I also try to go live on the HVAC Overtime YouTube channel with my buddies on Friday evenings about 6.05 p.m. Pacific where we just kind of recap the week. Of course, with the crazy summer, I've been missing a lot of live streams, been missing a lot of the overtime show, but I've just been so busy with family stuff and work stuff and whatever. So I try my best, but I really, really appreciate all the support. You guys are amazing, and uh, we will catch you on the next one, okay?